To get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is like went to me winning the Oscar, winning the Grammy, winning the Tony, all of those together. It's what I feel about getting into the rock. getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And it's been a long time. I started in this business when I was 17. And I've given, I will be 70 years old next year. And I've given over 50 years of my life to this business. But I've given my life to this business because I love it. And yet so many of those years were in support of other artists. Yes. You put yourself, or you were put, in the background. Yes. Called you the most overqualified backup <laughs> singer in the world, you know, for about 25 years. Right. Uh, when did you make the decision? I, this, I'm done with this. Okay. And I'm moving on. It, it I want to be a solo actor. It was amazing because I waited so long to make that decision because, you know, after a while you get comfortable. And what you're doing, I worked for Dion Warwick for 10 years as a backup singer. I worked for Tom Jones. I worked for uh, Nancy Sinatra. I met, worked for so many people as their backup singer. But the great part about it, they not, did not treat me as a backup singer. They treated me as one of their peers, which was great. So we all got along like I was one of the stars in, in the basket. But to the public, to the you're public, not known. Not known at all. Right. And what happened, I had been working for Dion, it was the last year, I said, uh, you know, I'm tired of traveling on the road for somebody else. And Bill Medley, one of the Righteous Brothers who I dated for three years, came up to me one day, said, okay, are you gonna be a backup singer all your life or do you wanna start a solo career? And I thought about it and I said, you know, it's time for me to be a solo career. And I have a solo career and I was 40 years old. But it was not easy no. making that transition. Right? It wasn't easy because the hard part of starting my solo career, I was not a crystal. My biggest records that I recorded was under the name of the Crystals, under the name of the Bobby Sox and the Blue Jeans. And when Phil Spector started recording me, we had already been successful as a crystal with the Do Run Run. He's a rebel. He Sure the Boy I Love. Those were all Crystal's top 10 records and number one records. And when he finally de decided to start rec recording Darling Love, my records were like top 20, top 30. How did you survive? The work just kind of just faded away. Uh, the background sessions were, I still had a lot of those, but those kind of faded away too. And I actually started doing day work. I actually, I had a Mercedes at the time that was paid for. I had fur coats that were paid for. So nobody really knew I was having all this trouble, difficult, because I never, never carried myself around like, oh, poor me. I can't find a job. You know, what am I going to do? I did day work. I was what making $50 a day. Cleaning houses, honey. <laughs> you became a housekeeper. Yes. <laughs> it didn't matter to me. It was about making a living. And, did uh, anybody in your family know you were doing this? They say they didn't, but I'm sure they did. I did that because I knew I was never going to stay here. And the proof of that is when um, I went to this lady's house to start cleaning, I had been working for her a couple of months, and it was during the holidays, and I heard Christmas Baby Please Come Home on the radio. <laughs> While you were cleaning the While house. I was cleaning her bathroom. Oh. And I looked in the mirror and I said, this is not what I'm supposed to do. I have a talent, a God-given gift, and I should be sharing it, I should be doing it. And from that day to this day, I never looked back. No matter whether I didn't have any money, whether I didn't have any gas to put in my car, it was always about a goal that I was trying, gonna try to reach. Yeah, Phil Spector, mm -hmm. huge part of your career, probably would not be in the Hall of Fame without him? I say that all the time because all of those records were great records. Now, we didn't think they were great records when we were recording them. I was 17 years old, so I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, Be My Baby, great song. He's a rebel? Yeah, okay, right. You know. <laughs> Wait till my Bobby gets home? Yeah. Sure, the boy, oh, come on. I need something with substance that's going to be a hit. 
but all of those records are still around today and they sound great. If it was not for Phil Spector, I would not, let me tell you for sure, I would not have a career today. But yet the most difficult person you've said to work with? He made his name recording Be My Baby, He's a Rebel, the Do Run Run. That's when he started getting a little crazy. And I had a seven-year contract with Phil, and he wouldn't let me out of that contract. That's when it got difficult and nasty. Are you surprised that he has ended up where he is now? No. In prison? No? I'm not surprised because years ago, I probably was one of the only person that would tell Phil, listen, if you don't stop fooling around with them guns, you're going to hurt somebody. Because I think it's stupid, Phil. It's stupid to have guns in the recording studios. And you know, the, the people in the studio ducking it, carrying on. I said, well, if you think I'm coming in there, you crazy. I'm going back home. And he would tell him, well, take these guns and, and put them up. Because you know, Darlene ain't going to come to work if, if I have these guns. I said, well, they crazy. Why are they in here sitting here while you waving a gun and they ducking? He did that in the recording studio? Yes. But I wouldn't go in. You know, somebody would come out and say, you know, Phil is in there with them guns again. I would say, well, tell him I'll see him later. And I would go home and somebody would come get me and tell me don't go out, go, because he, um, he put the guns up. At A&M Records, he was not allowed in that studio anymore because he went over there and shot up the whole bathroom. I think what makes you rock star to a lot of people is that you didn't stop. Right. The things did not go your way for 30, 40, 50 years, <laughs> maybe <laughs> 60 years, <laughs> but you didn't stop. You have to have a goal and you have to be determined. Do you have a song that is your favorite or do you have not even necessarily one of yours, but that just gets in your head? I don't mm -hmm. sing it, but it stays in my head. Barbara Streisand's People. People, people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. And I think about that song and I think about the words. It's not my favorite song, but it's one of those songs that goes through my head and it can help bring you down, you know, to earth. You don't have a lot of people, but you do need people. People who have helped me get where I am today. It has been people.